Wait, how many Arabics are there? Isn't it just one language? Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alhan and today I would like to help you choose the Arabic that you're going to learn. First of all, it's great to know that Arabic is spoken by over 400 million people. I can't even think about how big that number is. Also, there is over 25 dialects spoken by these people. So which one of them should you be learning? The good news is that the vast majority of people who speak Arabic, if not all of them, understand what's called modern standard Arabic, or it's called by Arabs, Al-Fusha. Al-Fusha, which we will also refer to by MSA, is used in education, it's used in books, so it's the language that people read in books, it's a language of news, it's the language of most children's cartoons. Some historical movies and TV series are in MSA. So we can see it has its uses in people's day-to-day -day life. And that's good news, right? However, the shocking news or the surprising news is that Arabs do not use MSA in their day-to-day -day speaking. How come? I'm not the best person to give you a historical review of how things have shifted from Arabs speaking Fusha to them speaking different dialects today, but I will add some links in the description below that explain this in a very beautiful manner. So the question is, even though people in their day-to-day -day speaking do not use Fusha, is it still possible to use it? Do people use it to speak it? In other scenarios, as I said, it is spoken in the news. So if you watch a news, the reporter will be speaking in Fusha. If you watch children's cartoons or historical movies, it is spoken. MSA is spoken and it is written. What's happening is that people on the street do not speak it. People at home do not speak it in their families and together. So keeping that in mind, is it still possible to speak it? Yes, I think it is. Even though if you go to the market and decide to buy something speaking in modern standard Arabic, you will have many eyes turned towards you. And it's mostly because they're curious. What is happening here? Why is this person speaking in Fusha? Is it wrong to speak in Fusha? Actually, it is too right, in my opinion. It's like an English-speaking person speaking in Shakespeare English when they're out in the market and trying to buy their coffee. That's the difference between modern standard Arabic and the day-to-day -day dialect. It is too high of a standard to be spoken just in the market, right? So when would a native Arabic speaker use modern standard Arabic in their day-to-day -day basis? If two Arabs do not understand each other's dialects and they do not speak another dialect, that they both understand, then it's very natural and common to just shift to modern standard Arabic. For example, in my day-to-day -day work as an interpreter, if I am faced with an Arab speaker who speaks in a dialect that I do not understand, I try to speak in a dialect that's very close to his dialect or her dialect. If it still doesn't work, then I ask can you speak in Fusha? Or sometimes they're the one who asks me, can you speak in Fusha with me? Then the shift happens and the conversation moves on. No problems at all. Now, moving on to the dialects. There are many dialects to learn. So with modern standard Arabic, it's just one thing agreed upon by all Arabs. However, when it comes to dialects, every dialect is different based on the region, and then it can be different in each country in that region. And even in one country, you can find many dialects that are different from each other. There might be small changes from one dialect to the other. How can you decide which one of them to learn? You need to be asking yourself, why? Why am I learning or why do I want to learn this specific dialect? So answer this question. I am learning Arabic because based on your answer, it'll be easier for you to determine 
what is your next step? If your reason involves reading and writing, I think you should be starting with modern standard Arabic because that's the way Arabs themselves learn how to read and write. It's through modern standard Arabic. If you are learning Arabic because you need to be communicating with certain people, maybe you are in a relationship and your partner is an Arab and you'd like to communicate with their side of the family, then you would be just learning the language through listening and speaking and you won't necessarily need reading and writing in there. I remember when I lived in Tunisia, I was taking some French lessons and in the classroom there, I saw a lady speaking in Tunisian Arabic. So I was wondering how come Tunisian doesn't speak French? And then, yes, not every Tunisian need to be speaking French. That's something I learned later on. However, that lady was not Tunisian at all. She was from a European country, married to a Tunisian, spoke Tunisian very fluently that I thought she was actually Tunisian. And she only understood Tunisian Arabic. She could not understand Egyptian Arabic, Gulf region Arabic, Levant Arabic, or modern standard Arabic. None of those. She could not read and write in Arabic. She needed Arabic to communicate to her husband's family, to be able to go to the market and buy the necessities. That's why she needed Arabic and that's what she learned. So again, it's up to you. Why do you need to learn Arabic? I would like to give you a taste of how different dialects can be from each other. So the phrase, how are you, in modern standard Arabic, which is what all Arabs would understand if they are educated or have some basic reading and writing skills, the phrase is, Kaifa haluka. This is addressing a male. Yes, Arabic grammar is another thing that I'm not going to dive into today. So saying how are you is kaifa haluka in modern standard Arabic. Now, if we travel a little bit, we go to the Gulf region. Some Gulf countries would say shlonik, that is how are you. If we travel a, a little bit to the northwest, to the Levant region, that phrase would be kifak. And then moving on to Egypt, Egyptians say izayak. Moving to a North African Arab country, which is Tunisia. I keep saying Tunisia because I lived in Tunisia and I understand their dialect fairly well. They would say shnahwalak. So you can see the difference there. And these are just teeny tiny examples that I'm giving you. I'm sure Arabs who are watching this can give us tons more examples from other dialects. And even the regions that I've mentioned, there are more ways of saying, how are you, other than the one that I have given the examples in. So if dialects are that different, are there any similarities between them? Yes, there are many similarities between dialects because they all have branched out from al-fusha, which is the classical or modern standard Arabic. In English, we have different terms for it. So yes, there are similarities, but if you start learning a certain dialect, then understanding another one at once might be a little difficult for you or challenging. Now, how to learn each one of those? If you decide to learn modern standard Arabic, what are the steps that you need to take? In my humble opinion, it's very important to take a course because that will teach you how the language works. It will teach you the grammar. It will teach you how to read and write. These are all necessities if you need to learn modern standard Arabic. Of course, finding an Arab group with which you can practice your modern standard Arabic is also very, very important. There are many free courses on YouTube that you can watch. Start there and then see if you really need a teacher. There are many teachers that you can find online. If there is someone that can help you in person, that would even be better and better because you can ask any questions that you have. You can be corrected as you're speaking. So make sure you do study it if you are planning to learn modern standard Arabic.
Learning dialects, on the other hand, can be a little challenging if you're a person who likes to have a, a curriculum or a pen and paper and write things down because there aren't as many resources to learn different dialects as there are to learn modern standard Arabic. The examples I've seen and my own experience as well from people who have learned a dialect was being with the people. So the lady I was talking about earlier, she just immersed herself in the culture. I doubt she even took notes on anything or wrote anything. It's just she was exposed. No one spoke her language. She had to learn it to communicate with people and she really mastered it. In my case, when I was in Tunisia, I had to have a notebook and write new vocabulary and then accustom my ears to their sentence structure and the grammar that they use because it was all different than the modern standard Arabic. But because I had that knowledge of modern standard Arabic, then I could connect. For example, in Tunisian dialect, when you talk about yourself, you are using the plural. Another way you can improve your dialect learning is through movies, TV shows, and series, immersing yourself in the culture being with the people, finding a community where you are to be with them and practice speaking and also listening. Hope this was helpful in helping you to decide what's the first step you need to take in learning Arabic. If there are any points that you have questions on or you would like more explanation on, please leave me a comment in the comment section below and I'll try my best to help you in your journey in learning Arabic. I am very, very passionate about Arabic and I sincerely would love to help anyone who likes to learn this language. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell and see you next week.